The Skypiea arc is one tracked as a low point for pre-time skip One Piece. And I'd have to say it's the weakest of the six pre-time skip arcs, with how the plot armor of even some minor characters prevents NL from being an effective villain. Though I wouldn't call it bad. One bad argument made against it by some for a while though, was that you could skip it, or the slightly less laughable criticism, that you could rework many of its introductions at some other point of the story. Leaving aside the introduction of many characters or relationships in the Jaya part of it, or Skypea introducing the Void Century, Roger's Expeditions, Dials, and more fleshed out usage of Kembunshoku Haki than Zoro's implied usage against Daz Bones, or its use as a microcosm of the events of Wano, or what may soon come, there are many aspects of it that made Sky Pier essential for Water 7's narrative to have any weight. The first obvious point is the go in Mary's damages. Though it took some severe damage when leaving Arabasta, this being an for it to be beyond repair would be quite banal compared to having to endure the impact of being brought into the clouds. There's then, of course, the Klabouterman. That would have been no more than a sudden contrivance, even if still a plot convenience regardless, had it suddenly been brought up as a reason to save the crew at Eni's lobby. Also concerning the Merry and its successor is the gold required in Skypea that allowed Frankie to buy all that was necessary for his dream ship, none of which could be reworked into Arabasta, with how the crew taking a reward from the royal family would detract from the importance of Nami being able to let it slide, as well as it being a stretch that what reward the Straw Hats could cobble together when on the run would be worth anywhere near as much as the Shandoran gold. The most important event in the arc leading into the Water 7 events is the crew bonding with Nico Robin and her opening up to them. Had they gone from mostly untrusting, or only having surface level interest in her, to being willing to risk their lives to save her, then the entire Ennis Lobby segment would be rushed and jarring. Of course, Oda isn't an idiot, and applied enough scenes of her interacting with the crew to help her go from untrustworthy to most, to a true member of the crew. This is best displayed through her interactions with Zod in which we see her care towards animals, him realising there's a softer side to her when she has time to take in Angel Beach both agreeing not to fight each other, and all this leading up to the moment where Zoro finally shows enough trust in her to protect her from Enel. We also see quite a lot of interactions between her and Nami, with her coming to respect Nami more and more, as the latter gradually displays more of her courageous side before this is brought to a peak in her being willing to get up Giant Jack to save Luffy, with Nami spending enough time with Robin through finding value in her archaeology, lining up with Nami's treasure hunt, or generally proving her loyalty to the crew, to the extent she shows as much concern as Zoro when NL attacks her. She also uses her abilities to save Usopp and offers to help Chopper without any prompting, showing both her desire to be of use to the crew and a genuine care for them. Perhaps her most important reactions though, are towards the downtime of the arc, where getting time to take in the adventure and camaraderie act as a new experience for her, such as when arriving at Angel Beach, or during the campfire, in which Usopp's comments on Robin having lived in the dark foreshadows the symbolism around her in the next arc. It's moments such as this that make it meaningful when she later says that she enjoyed her time with the crew, or present enough care to offer her own freedom for theirs. There are also a few hints at later displays of her layered personality. Her taunts towards Nola being a restrained version of Luffy's attitude in the same scene points towards them being more similar than 
at first glance, which shows later with her finding some tense situations thrilling, and the usage of her devil fruit powers to make gigantic copies of arms, legs, or her complete upper body for greater brute force, being not unlike Gear Third and now Fifth. Another aspect of Robin's past revealed in the next arc is through her care towards the plight of the Shandian people. It helps build up the fate of O'Hara through this level of sympathy for strangers being otherwise uncharacteristic of what we know of her at this point, and help the audience realise beforehand the personal link the destruction of one's people has to her. This along with her excitement at exploring historical land, and the care she places towards respecting such relics, help make the audience invested in her character in a way that couldn't be done with only the events immediately after Skypea. I'd also be remiss if I didn't mention her comment to Yama on those disrespectful of the past being doomed to repeat it, being one of the most important lines in this part of the arc, when acknowledging Skypea serving as a microcosm towards Joy Boy's role or the will of D, but also adds meaning to the post-time skip arcs highly comparable to pre-time skip events, when placing emphasis on her line of not being able to return to the past, Hoddy Jones's mindless parroting of what Arlon believed, without the genuine experiences, caused his campaign to be a hollow and pathetic one, with its repetition being prevented when figures such as Nami, Shirahoshi, or Jinbei broke the cycle of hate, the Flamingo using similar methods to Crocodile, and and being confronted by more experienced Luffy, led to the heavenly Yasha being brought down to earth in an inevitable defeat, as opposed to a blast into the sky by Luffy's last ounce of willpower. And it's safe to say the final arc's war will be a far different conclusion than the summit war. Going back to before venturing to Skypea though, and instead the events on Jaya, an essential point of it is Bellamy's role. You could rewrite Teacher's introduction possibly, if this arc didn't occur, but you could not remove it and Bellamy without sacrificing a lot of important character moments, such as there being a limit to how much Pride, Nami, is willing to sacrifice for money, or Luffy and Zoro see no fulfilment in defeating someone without a dream of their own. This makes Bellamy unique amongst the jaded pirates who changed from Luffy defeating them, as while those such as Crocodile or Moria had a newfound desire to follow their old ambitions instead of achieving them through elaborate means that may come down like a house of cards, Bellamy was someone with no personal ambition of his own, whose defeat led to him pursuing and discovering Skypea, with gold that would convince Doflamingo to let him rejoin the family, and serve a character arc in Dressrosa, of going from respectable opposition to ally of Luffy and has now chosen to abandon piracy in favour of a more consistent profession, when knowing that even if he doesn't have what it takes to brave the new world or be pirate kin, he can still hold enough ambition to find a fulfilling path in life. Though you could potentially remove Bellamy from the story, it'd be at the expense of several pieces of characterization and a solid individual character arc. It's for these reasons that you couldn't remove Skypea and still have the events around Water 7, or even later arcs, work, showing how essential it is to the wider story. As you can guess, the next One Piece video will be on a Water 7 topic. As for what aspect, that's for you to find out. So be sure to subscribe and check out this playlist of previous One Piece analyses. 